Sexy man, sexy man. Eating brains like a sexy man can. Let's get a crate a clap on deck that could choke a donkey. Well, hey, everybody. Jeff Williams here with AskJeffWilliams.com. Well, first of all, sonny boy, yeah, I know I'm making a mess. I want to give a shout out to everyone who can make it out to our gold mining tour, our placer tour, metal detecting tour. Huge, huge success. It was one of the best on the books. They found record amount of gold nuggets out there. And Joanne and Kelly, they cooked up some mean Dutch oven food. I tell you what, even some peach cobbler. If you miss that one, oh, you missed one for the books, I tell you what. Now, I know I'm going to regret eating these beans, but you know me, I just love my beans. Now, if you missed a metal detecting tour, don't you fret none. I'm going to leave a link down below. Oh, yeah, that's good. Now, you watch that, and you can see what it's all about. Trust me, you don't want to miss these. The nuggets are legendary, like these beans. <coughs> all right, enough jaw jacking, boy. Let's get back in there and get some work done. I got a whole bunch of stuff to show you. Ooh, and you're not going to want to miss this one. So you know what I'm going to say, huh? Ooh, you better say it with me, loud and proud. So come on. My name is Jeff. Let's go. Ooh, I better turn my light on so I don't get lost down here. There's a maze of tunnels down here everywhere. Ooh, let's see, do I go left, right? Up, down, I can't figure it out. Ooh, good thing I got my tram car right there waiting for me. Who needs to walk when they got their own tram? All right, let's get on this thing and go to work. Got my iced tea too. Mm. Yeah, all right, here we go. Uh, all right, get the emergency brake off. Here we go, boy. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. Mmm. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get on to getting it on. You see what I see? See how I whiten that out for you? Doesn't that look good? All I got to do is blow this section out right here. See that section? All I got to do is blow him out and then open this up to right about here. And then I'll be able to walk straight on in. But this is that hard, nasty caliche right here. Speaking of which, I got a whole bunch of hard caliche in there, and that's what we're going to be working on today. Man, that stuff's harder than concrete. Nasty stuff. All right, let's get on in there and get it done. We went ahead and collected up all the artifacts that we found in there. Put them in here. Now, it seems some of you out there don't like the way I eat. And we talked about this before. But you know what? I got to keep my strength up, son of boy. How else am I going to dig 24-7 without some protein? And that's the best way to get it is hard tack and beans. Look at that. I'm going to walk right on through that now. Yeah, uh, right. It's so much easier. Look at all these crystals everywhere. Uh, oh, that's a huge crystal. Uh, look at that crystal right there. Just sitting on the floor. Huge monker. I'll collect them all up. Ooh, there's another nice one. Look at that. Now, if you remember last time, the muck came all the way up to here. So we went ahead and mucked it out. That was three tons, three tons of muck just to get down here to this floor level. See that? Well, there it is. It's all dug out. We opened up this Chinese tunnel and we went ahead and opened this guy up too. And then eventually we're going to blow this wall out right here so it'll go straight on through. That way we can run our, our buckets down into here. We're going to have a small ore cart we're going to be running. Then dump directly into our skip bucket and then we just hoist it up. It'll be a lot easier. We encountered a thick bed of caliche. That's why we're here today. But before I show you that, I want to show you these crystals. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Just pods of crystals. Huge bands of crystals. Look at this. Look at that. And look at, see I got roots down here too. People argue with me and say, oh, I can't believe roots are that far down. Well, they're down here, sonny boy. Look at these crystals right here. It's a nice, oh, that's a big one. Look at that. Oh, it's huge. It's a monster. Ah, look at the size of that monker. 
Now that's a crystal. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Now this is where we're going to be digging for gold nuggets right down in there. See that red clay seam? It's sitting on top of that caliche right there. And right here, this is solid caliche. I mean, it's harder than solid rock. The jackhammers won't even go through it. So we're going to have to figure out how to get through it. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn my light off so I don't blind you. We went ahead and built a small cabin on top of the head frame and the shaft, of course, the collar. And that way it keeps out the rain, the elements, and of course, would-be claim jumpers who are trying to find this darn thing. Take a look. We got lighting in it too. Isn't that nice? And then we gotta keep running the sets down here. One there, one there, one there. All this material that you see right here has gotta come out. So just imagine how much fun we're gonna have pulling material from there all the way down to there. Who needs a gym, sonny boy? Just be a gold miner. I want to know how many people out there have figured out how we're going to get through that solid band of caliche that's down there. That's harder than concrete. So what I want you to do is leave me a comment down below and say, Jeff, I know how you're going to get through that. You're going to be using those beans. <laughs> well, you're absolutely right. I'm going to be using those beans. Now I get a lot of people asking me, Jeff, I can't afford to hire a contractor to come out to my mine and do some blasting. And the Sierra Blaster is just too small for the work that we're doing. Do you have an alternative? Well, yes I do. It's right here. It's called Dexpan or Ecobus. Both basically the same thing. It's an expanding grout. Now, that's what we're going to do today because I figured we would try different techniques so that way it gives you guys out there different options when you're dropping your own shafts or when you're mining or whatever it is you're doing to get to that shiny. Because not everybody has access to dynamite, sonny boy, that's why. When you're using this stuff, it's very important to know the temperature of the rock that you're working with. With Dexpan, they make three different types and with Ecobus, they make four different types. I'm going to go over it in a hole with you so you can understand how it works so you get the maximum effects from this material when you're trying to bust up some rock. But before I do, you better smash that like button, boy. Smash it hard! Higher than that! I wish somebody would come down here and help me do that. Do I have any takers? Huh? I don't hear you. Huh? Now the first thing you gotta know is the temperature of the rock that you're working with when you're working with expanding grout. Very important. That's why they make different types. So we're gonna go ahead and take the temperature of the rock to see what we're working with. Uh, looks like about 63 degrees. Now I'm using Dexpan, and Dexpan says if you're working with rock temperatures that are from 77 down to 50, you need type 2. Type 1 is 77 up to 95 degrees, 100 degrees, something like that. And if you're working with really cold rock, below 50 degrees, that's type 3. Alright, now that you got the temperature figured out on the rock you're working with, you need to lay down a grid pattern for your drill holes. Now we're working with extremely hard caliche. So our drill holes are gonna be anywhere from eight to 12 inches apart. And also don't forget that that rock has to have somewhere to go. Just like when you're using conventional explosives, you have to have an open space for that rock to go into when it starts cracking. If you don't, it's not gonna work very well. So freestanding boulders are good, or in our case, we have one side that's completely open. If you have a flat surface and you're trying to bring it up, you're gonna have to create 45 degree wedge cuts in there. Luckily for us, we have this open side right here. So all the rock is gonna go that way. And we need to move all of this into there. Now, one last thing I need to talk about is the hole diameter. That's very important too. Now on the expanding grout we're using, which is Dexpan, it requires that the hole be an inch and a half in diameter. And no jokes out there either. On <laughs> Would you stop that? You're messing me up, boy. Stop making me laugh. All right, we're going to go ahead and measure out our grid. And I'm going to spray paint the holes so we know where to drill. Like I told you before, the idea is to create a sump right here so that our shaft sinking bucket can drop down deeper than the level that we're standing on. It's really important because when you're bringing in your ore cars or whatever it is you're using to transfer the muck or the ore, you want to be able to dump directly into it so much easier than trying to shovel up into it or move the material up into it. Always work down using gravity. It's so much easier. So what we're gonna do is extend the shaft down an additional four feet 
to create a sump. And that way our shaft sinking bucket can drop all the way down into it. And all we have to do is dump into it directly. So much easier. Maybe put an apron around the outer edge to keep anything from spilling over. And then just continue working all this material into it. Drop the rest of our sets in. We're good to go. And then get that shiny boy. Now we have time today. I'm going to be bringing in the Gold Monster 1000 and doing some metal detecting in here. I haven't had time because I've been mucking the whole time. Three tons of it. Anyway, I wanted to start running metal detector in here and see if we got any nuggets. You can tell this is the very bottom of an old ancient riverbed. I mean, look at this. It's classic. This is all really super smooth caliche. It's rounded. See that? And I got round rocks everywhere down here. Now I had so much trouble with the last respirator with all kinds of stuff getting in my face and my eyes, even with eye protection on, I decided to do something about it. Would you like to see what that is, boy? Huh? Yeah, what do you think about that, huh? My whole face is protected, sonny boy. That way I don't gotta worry about stuff getting in my eyes. Cause even with goggles on, they somehow gets in through the side. I hate that. All right, let's stop all this jaw jacking, boy, because I need to get that sump put in. So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? Woo, you better. So come on, let's go. Now, these right here are harmonic balancers. These are called trunnions. The reason why we have these harmonic balancers on here, there's one on each side, and there's one over there too. This helps stabilize the bucket when it goes up and these trunnions get hooked in. This creates like a little buffer for it to lock in completely. That's why they're here, and they're off a of Chrysler for any of you people who out there were guessing Ford or Chevy. Alright, sonny boy, I'm gonna ring the bell, move the bucket up so I can get a better shot underneath it. You gotta be real careful with that bell. That looks pretty good. Let's get it up out of here, shall we? I tell you what, there's nothing spookier than being underneath a shaft sinking bucket when it's going up fully loaded. Ooh. <laughs> oh man, you don't want to see that thing drop. All right, now we're going to mark out our holes so we know where to drill. All right, got one there, got one there, got one there, and got one there. It's off by a little bit, but that's okay. All right, I got my holes mapped out one there there i got three there three there and three there there's my grid now i just gotta drill them out this big old monker right here oh yeah that's gonna be a lot of fun
tell you what, sonny boy, who needs a gym? Just be a gold miner, boy. Some people explore mines. Some people own mines. But we dig mines. Ain't nobody doing that, boy. From start to finish. All right, we got 11 holes drilled, sonny boy. Now, if you plan on drilling a lot of holes, I recommend going with the SDS Max hollow drill bits. And the reason why is because you can hook a vacuum cleaner up to it and it'll suck out all your, your fine dust that you're drilling up. And that's important because as you're trying to drill down, it will start to build up and it'll create a barrier between the end of your bit and the beginning of that hole. Now, if you don't happen to have an SDS Max hollow bit, what we like to do is as we're drilling down, we'll vacuum out the hole. You got to vacuum them out anyway when you get done to make sure there's no debris in there. Now what we've done is we've taken a regular vacuum cleaner and we attached a piece of PVC tubing and then we've got this smaller tube which is about an inch and a half in diameter. You see that? And that's great because it'll fit right in that hole and vacuum it out. Just like that. You want to do that while you're drilling. Then when you're finished, you're going to go through and you're going to clean each individual hole out to make sure there's nothing down there at all. It's clean as a whistle, boy. Now you're going to take one bag out of that bucket and you're going to mix that with 1.5 liters of water. Then you're going to use a paint stirrer and a drill, make sure there's no clumps in there. And then what you're going to do is we like to put a funnel in our hole, pour it in there. And then while it's sitting, we like to stir it a little bit and make sure there's no air pockets in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. Oh, and you better wear a mask too because you think this is fine material, the stuff that's in those bags, ooh, it gets in your lungs, it'll mess you up good. Senator boy, I'm gonna let this set for 24 hours. Now I should start seeing something in about two to three hours, some cracking or something. Now when you do this and you're pouring it, don't look in the holes because sometimes if the rock is hot enough, you'll have a blowout. You don't want that stuff in your face or your lungs. And whatever you have left over, get rid of it. Don't leave it in a bucket. Now if you like today's episode, you better smash that like button, boy. Smash it hard. And don't forget to leave me a comment down below. Maybe you got a better way of doing this that I don't know about. I'd like to hear about it. Stay tuned for the next video because that's when we're going to show you the results. Yeah, just hang tight, son of a boy. You got to wait for this one. Now, before I go, we're going to be offering gold mining tours again here soon. And if you want to get involved with that, all you got to do is click the little link at the end of the video that looks something like, yeah, like that, boy. Click on it, make a $10 pledge, and you're in like Flint. Hey, boy, I'm going to get on out of here. So until next time, this is Jeff Williams and who? A chef that's going down to China, that's who. Saying, you like these drip mine videos? Well, we do too. Stay tuned for the next one and see if we get some AU. Take care, everybody. <laughs>